Rambam Mishnah Torah, one chapter a day. Kilaim chapter 10. Halacha 1. The prohibition against mixed fabric, fabrics in clothes involves only wool and linen. As Devarim 22.11 states, do not wear shutners, wool and linen together. In seaports, there is something like wool that grows on stones in the Mediterranean Sea whose appearance resembles gold, and it is very soft. It is called kelech. It is forbidden to be mixed with linen because of the appearance it creates, because it resembles landfall. Similarly, silk and kelech are forbidden because of the appearance it creates. Halachatu. When a ewe is born to a she-goat, one is not liable for mixing its wool with linen. It is, however, forbidden according to rabbinic decree because of the impression it creates. If wool and linen are connected in any manner, they are considered mixed fabrics according to scriptural law. What is implied? When wool and linen were mixed together, combed together and made into a, into a smooth mass, they are considered as mixed fabrics. If they are mixed and combed as one and then a garment was woven from this combed fabric, they are considered mixed fabrics. Halakha 11. Sorry, Halakha 3. If one sewed woolen fabric to linen, even if you sewed them with silk, sewed a woolen garment with linen thread, or a linen garment with a woolen thread, one tied woolen threads with linen threads or braided them together, or even if one placed woolen linen together in a sack or a basket and wound them, they are considered as mixed fabrics. Even if one tied a braid of wool to a braid of linen, even if there is a strap of leather in between, they are considered mixed fabrics. This law also applies if one folded over woolen and linen fabric and tied them together. The rationale is that the proof text states wool and linen together, since they are combined regardless of how they are forbidden. Hal Halakha 4 what is the source that teaches that all these prohibitions are scriptural in origin? We derive from this fact that the Torah had to explicitly state that Kilaim are permitted in Sitzit, as we learned according to the oral tradition. The passage concerning Kilaim was positioned next to the passage concerning Sitzit solely to teach that Kilaim are permitted in Sitzit. Now the Sitzit are strands that are tied together. Thus it can be derived that a connection of this type in a situation that does not involve a mitzvah is forbidden according to scriptural law. For the Torah would not exclude something that is forbidden only according to rabbinic law. Halacha 5. There is no minimum measure for kilaim. Even the smallest thread of a wool in a large linen garment or a thread of linen in a woolen garment is forbidden. Halacha 6. The following laws apply when one makes the wool of ewes with the wool of camels and the like was made, and the like and made thread from them. If half of the mixture is from the ewes, it is considered as kilaim with flax. If, however, the majority is from the camels, it is permitted to mix them with flax, because the form of the entire mixture is that of camel wool. We do not pay attention to the strands of wool that are mixed with them, for they are not threads of wool. Halacha 7. Therefore, when sheep hides are used to make garments, they are permitted even though they are sewed with flax. We are not concerned with, concerned with the strands of wool, even though they become entwined with linen threads used to sew it, because the wool is insignificant because of the minute amount that is there. Halacha 8. Similar laws apply when hemp and linen were mixed with each other. If the majority is hemp, it is permitted to weave these threads with woolen threads. If they are half and half, it is forbidden. Halacha 9. If a person makes a garment entirely out of camel's wool, rabble wool, or hemp and weaves one thread of sheep's wool on one side and one thread of linen on the other side, it is forbidden as kilain. Halacha 10. When a woolen garment becomes torn, it is permitted to join it together with threads of linen and tie them, but one may not sew them. Halakha 11. A person may wear woolen garments and linen garments and tie a belt around them from the outside, provided he does not wind together cords of each fabric and tie them between his shoulders. It is permitted to make mixed fabrics and sell them. It is forbidden only to wear them or cover oneself with them. This is derived from the verses in Devarim 22.11, Do not wear shutners, and Vaikra 19.19, A garment that is of mixed fabrics, shutners shall not come upon you. The association of the verses implies that to be forbidden, a garment must come upon you, as one wears it. If, however, it comes upon one not in a manner of wearing, i.e. a tent that is kilaim, it is permitted to sit under it. Similarly, it is permitted, according to scriptural law, to sit on spreads that are made of kilaim, for shall not for shall not come upon you implies that you may spread it under you. According to rabbinic decree, however, even if there are ten spreads, one on top of the other, and the bottom one is kilaim, it is forbidden to sit on the top one, lest a strand of kilaim become wound around one's flesh.
Halakhat 13, when does the above apply? With regard to spreads made from soft fabrics, for example, curtains and sheets. With regard to those made from firm fabrics that will not become wound upon a person's body, for example, pillows and cushions. It is permitted to sit or lie upon them provided one's flesh does not touch them. Halakha 14. Similar laws apply when a drape is made from kilane. If it is soft, it is forbidden lest a servant lean against it and it become draped around his body. If it was firm and would not be draped, it is permitted. Halakha 15. It is permissible to wear slippers from kilane that do not have a heel. The rationale is that the skin of the foot is tough and does not derive satisfaction, as does the skin of the other portions of his body. Halakha 16. Seamstresses are sewing together, sewing garments may sew kilame in their ordinary manner, provided they do not intend to benefit from them, using them as a shield against the sun in the summer and the rain in the rainy season. The meticulous sew with a garment lying on the earth. Similarly, people who sell garments may sell them in the ordinary manner, as long as they do not have the intent that the kilame on their shoulders will protect them from the heat in the summer and warm them in the rainy season. The meticulous hang the clothes on a pole extended over their backs. Halakha 17. A person should not pick up a hot egg with a cloth at his kilame, for he is then benefiting from the mixed fabrics as protection from the heat or from the cold. Similar laws apply in, in all analogous situations. Halakha 18. A person should not wear kilame even temporarily and even on top of ten other garments, in which instance he is not driving benefit from the mixed fabrics. This is forbidden even to deceive customs inspectors. If one wears them for such a purpose, he is liable for lashes. Halakha 19. The prohibition against wearing kilame applies only to garments that are worn to provide warmth. For example, a long shirt, a hat, pants, a belt, a dress, knee, knee pants, gloves, or the like. However, small belts that people make with their pockets prepared to hold money, spices, or the like that are, are, are permitted despite the fact they contain kilame. Even though one's flesh touches them, because this is not the ordinary way in which one warms himself, the same principles apply with, a, with regard to a rag on which one places a bandage, pultus, dressing, or the like. Halakha 20. A forehead piece of leather, silk, or the like, to which are attached strands of wool and strands of leather that hang over a person's face to chase away flies, are not forbidden as kilome, because this is not the manner through which a person derives warmth. Halakha 21. It is permitted for a person to for a person who is leading animals to hold the lashes attached to them in his hand, even though some of them are linen and some of them are wool. He may even wind them around his hand. If, however, he ties them all together, they consider it as kilame, and it is forbidden for him to bind them around his hand. Halakha 22. Towels used to clean hands, cloths used to wipe down utensils, and land... Mantles for Torah scrolls and a barber's cloth are all forbidden to be made from kilame. The rationale is that one's hands touch them and they always become wound around the hands and warm them. Halakha 23. The following law applies to tickets that launderers and weavers make for clothes so that each person could identify his own. If the ticket was of wool on a linen garment or a linen ticket on a woolen garment, it is forbidden even though it is not significant for him. Halakha 24. When a person joined a woolen cloth to a linen cloth with one, thrust, with one thrust of the needle and thread, they are not considered as having been joined together, and they are not considered as kilane. If you gather the two heads of the thread and tie them together, or join the cloths with two thrusts of the needle and thread, they are considered as kilane. Halakha 25. It is permitted to make shrouds for the deceased from kilane, for the deceased are not obligated in any mitzvot. Kilane may be used as a saddle blanket for a donkey, and one may sit on it, provided his flesh is not touching it. He should not place this saddle blanket on his shoulder, even to take out the compost. Halakha 26. It is permissible, permissible to carry a corpse or an animal that is dressed in kilane on one's shoulders. Halakha 27. When a thread of linen becomes lost with, within a woolen garment, or a thread of wool becomes lost within a linen garment, the garment should not be sold to a Gentile, lest the Gentile sell it to a Jew. Nor should he make it a saddle blanket for a donkey, lest another person find it and tear it, and tear it of the saddle blanket and wear it, because the kalim are not discernible within it. What can be done to correct the situation regarding this garment? 
it should be dyed because wool and linen will not dye in the same manner. Thus the lost thread will become recognisable and then he should remove it. If it is not recognisable after the dyeing, it is permitted to use the garment for ha perhaps the lost thread, thread fell off. After all, he checked it and did not find it, as we explained already in the laws of forbidden intimate relations. Any pre prohibition arising from a doubt is of rabbinical origin. Therefore our sages were lenient because of the doubt. Halakha 28. When a person purchases woolen garments from Gentiles, he must check them very carefully, lest they be sewn with linen thread. Halakha 29. When a person sees kilaim that are forbidden by scriptural law on his friend, even if the latter is walking in the marketplace, he should jump up and rip it off him immediately. This applies even to his teacher with, from whom he has learned wisdom, for the obligation to honour people at large does not supersede a negative prohibition in the Torah. Why is such a prohibition superseded with regard to returning a lost object? Because the prohibition involves financial, ma involves financial matters. Why is a prohibition superseded with regard to the ritual impurity associated with a corpse? Because scripture made an exclusion regarding his, regarding his sister. According to their old tradition, it was taught, For his sister he may not become impure, but he may become impure for a corpse that, is, that it is a mitzvah to bury. If, however, a prohibition is rabbinic in origin, it is superseded by the consideration of a person's honour in all situations. Although the Torah states in Devarim 17.11, do not deviate from any of the statements they relate, they relate to you, this prohibition is superseded by considerations of a person's honour. Accordingly, if another person has upon him shutness that is forbidden, according to scriptural law, one may not rip it off him in the marketplace, nor must the person himself remove it in the marketplace until he reaches home. If the shutness was forbidden, according to scriptural law, he must remove it immediately. Halakha 30. A person who wears kilaim or covers himself with them is liable for lashes. If he was wearing kilaim the entire day, he is liable only for one set of lashes. If he repeatedly stuck his head in and out of the garment, even though he did not take off the garment, the entire garment, he is liable for each time he stuck his head out. When is he liable for only one set of lashes? When he received one warning. It, it, if, however, they warned him and told him, take it off, take it off, and he continued to wear it and remained wearing for the amount of time necessary to remove it and put it on after they warned him, he is liable for lashes for each interval that he waited. For he was warned regarding it, and nevertheless did not remove the forbidden garment. Halakha 31. The following laws apply when a person dresses a colleague in claim. If the wearer acted consciously, he is liable for lashes, and the person who dressed him is liable for placing a stumbling block before the blind. If the person wearing the garment did not know that it was kalim, and the person who dressed him acted willfully, that person is liable for lashes, and the wearer is exempt. Halakha 32. When priests wear their priestly garments, that when they are not performing service, even though they are in the temple, they are liable for lashes because the sash contains kilaim and license to wear it was granted only while performing service, for that is a positive commandment like tzitzit. Blessed be the merciful one who grants assistance.